Shout out Sniper T on the beat. Tamara to the break of dawn is on the rise with life on the forefront of the mind. So line for line, you can ride this brain train and you can change your station without even touching the dial. So relax, stay a little bit, but listen for a while. And whether you're bumping this in the whip or in a business fit, it's a meeting you won't want to miss. A meeting for a meal to feed the soul with words for the mind. So sit back, enjoy the ride, time to take off, it's time to fly, cause Tamara to the break of dawn is on the ride. Hey y'all, hey, it's me, Tamara. Oh man, um, well, welcome to the show. Let me start with that. If you're a new listener, new episodes drop every Thursday. You can either list it on any auto audio platinum, blah, audio platform. Just if you're new, I mess up all the time, so it just is what it is, but any audio platform. You can also check me out on YouTube if you want to see visuals. Um, to all my regular supporters, I genuinely appreciate y'all. The feedback, just the interacting, all that. Thank you so much for your support. And if you're not, you should totally be following me on social media. So you can follow me on IG, Twitter. Link to both of those are on my website, which is TamaraTheDawn.com. If you're watching, it's at the bottom of the screen. And if you're listening, it's in the episode notes. Um, let's see what other announcements. Um, so my next live show is Wednesday, April 21st at 9 Eastern, 8 Central, 6 Pacific. It's going to be a spoken word night. Um, got a couple of dope poets that... They're going to perform. I'm going to do some stuff. So it's going to be a good night. You know me. I'm always trying to create a vibe. So all of our personalities mixed together, it's going to be a super dope night. So again, that's April 21st at 9, 8, 6. The next podcast, Happy Hour. Um, man, shout out to Chris and Autumn for being on last week doing the special Petty Tam Tam show. There, We're three-fifths of podcast happy hour. Um, the other two are Jay Boog and Audrey. So Audrey from Odd Tales podcast, she is hosting on Saturday, April 24th at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central, 5 Pacific. It's going to be live on, <sighs> for sure, I know Facebook and YouTube, Twitter, I don't know. Twitter doesn't have Periscope, which is where we always did anything, everything before. So I guess as we get closer to that, if I have more information on that, then I'll give you that. But if you follow her on Twitter, you know, she'll advertise it on there or IG. So let's see what else. Merch, y'all get some merch. That can be found on my website. You know, I got all kinds of different designs. There's the podcast logo. There's different encouraging, inspirational stuff for either content creators, podcasters. Um, there's a poem on there. Like, there's all kinds of stuff. So if you go to my website, there are two different shop tabs that you can go to, check me out, whatever. If you want to support um, in a different way, just give me some money towards the TAM special or whatever. There's a support tab on my website as well. I mean, obviously I just do this, but at the same time, sometimes people do want to support content creators. So I figured I'd put it out there. Um, next up is the podcast shout out. So this week is why not sports, which I've talked about D Murph on here before. He's a huge supporter of the podcast happy hour and just, you know, us as solo podcasters as well. Um, he's been on the show. And so he has a show called The Flagrant 2, which I listen to and I've been a guest on. But then he also has another show called Why Not Sports, which is about sports, obviously. So I've never listened to that one, but the link to the episode, I mean, the link to the show will be in the episode notes because, you know, I'm trying to give people shout outs or whatever, let y'all know about different podcasts that are out here that you might want to check out. Um, speaking of which, shout out to Paco from Black Paco from Nuts and Guts podcast. He had me on his show recently. It was 
a super random episode, but he's someone who's easy to talk to. So we just kind of talked about all kinds of different stuff. Um, I guess he's doing kind of like a mixtape series. And so that's what it was called. But the link to the that show, I'll put that in the episode notes if you want to check that out. So let's go ahead and get into, hold on, today's topic. And it's interesting because I didn't even necessarily like plan on recording today. But y'all know this show is a therapeutic outlet for me a lot of times. Um it's about it's about my life and the ways I'm trying to grow if you're new. So sometimes there will be I just have a lot on my mind. I just need to get it out. It's not even that it's late and I can't sleep because it's actually not that late. And I was actually watching The Sopranos, but that's my show, y'all. Um, and I watched it before, like back when it was new. And so I've been re-watching it or whatever. Anywho, so um, I hadn't even planned on recording, but I don't know. There's just a lot on my mind. I'm just in this transition kind of state, and I just figure I've kind of, I don't know. I'll just kind of talk to y'all about where I'm at, where I'm going, and then how I see how the past kind of is prepared, has prepared me for such a time as this excuse me, but also is preparing me for where I'm going. So, excuse me, today is uh, April 9th, and usually I don't necessarily tell y'all the dates of when I record or whatever, but it's important for you to know that date simply because if you're, if you've paid attention to anything that's happening in the world, then you know that today is the day that it was confirmed that DMX passed away. Now, you also know I don't really get into celebrity stuff at all, um, but it's a little bit different because, for one, this is somebody who I am a fan of his music and have been since I was in high school because that's how old I was when he came out. His and Snoop's verses was my favorite, and I've said that before, so it's not like I'm just saying that. If I haven't said it on this platform, because I don't know if I've talked about it on here, people who talk to me know that I've always said that was my favorite because no shade to the other ones, but I was such a fan of their music. Not like I ever stopped being a fan, but I was such a fan in high school that, you know, it just took me back or whatever, which shout out to Versus that we got that. We get these free concerts, but specifically like that one hits different since his passing. But then also whenever a father passes away, specifically a black father, because I'm black. And if you know anything about my life, you know that five and a half years ago, my daughters there, I have two daughters their dad was killed. So whenever a father is killed or dies or whatever, and I think about the kids left behind, I think about the mom left behind that's going to have to raise those kids. It just resonates resonates with me. But then death in general just really makes me start thinking about kind of like how short life is. It's kind of why I live my life thinking about the legacy that I'm leaving behind because there have been other deaths even outside of the girl's dad that just make me think like, okay, everything I'm doing now is basically writing the story, writing whatever of either how people are going to say I made them feel or whatever, or for this show, I'm leaving behind what I want to be remembered by. You know what I mean? So what I want, or also what I want my kids to have. So that's what this show is for me. And so death, when it's a public death of a celebrity, it's always all over the place, all over social media and this, that, and the other. So it's kind of like, unless you stay off social media, what it's, it's not like it triggered me or anything like that where I need to do it, but it just really makes you think about it. And so as a result of that, I'm kind of in this raw emotional state. Yes, I shed tears. I don't shed tears over 
every celebrity that dies, you know, I was really praying that he would pull through because, I mean, God can do anything, but, you know, it is what it is. And so, um, like, it's just a, a very raw emotional time. And I'm also just really already in this transition period. So let's talk about that. Cause I've kind of like talked about stuff here and there, but I'm going to divulge not everything because some stuff it'll, you'll know when you'll know, but you'll, I'm not going to say you'll be the first to know. Cause it just depends on what marketing looks like, but maybe, you know what I'm saying? Um, okay. So I'm, well, I'm in the process right now. I'm taking this cor these courses, which I feel like I mentioned it on here before. There's this program called Room for Roots, which is a nonprofit in it's in Omaha, Nebraska. I don't live specifically in Omaha, Nebraska, but it's that's where the company is. And what this company does is, like I said, it's a nonprofit, and I'm gonna totally butcher this because this, like, I don't have notes or anything like that for this. But basically, um, it's about kind of like breaking. <sighs> no, let me get it right. This is bad because I really should know this. Um, the purpose of the program is to help people become entrepreneurs, but it's not just oh, just start a business for the start sake of starting a business. But like, really wanting to change lives, change the, you know, court, the traje trajectory of families and stuff like that. So they teach you different things about financial literacy, you know, the basics of the different type of companies, et cetera. And as you do the work and as you participate in the program and, and go to all the classes at the end of it all, um, they'll, get you set up, get your business registered, pay the fees that are associated with all that. So that's cool in and of itself. But then you also get a business mentor for 18 months and access to whatever resources they have. So I remember mentioning to somebody once that I was going through this program so that I could start a bit my business. And they were like, oh, you don't have to do that. All you got to do is research and do it, which I knew that because I had already had a consultation meeting with shout out to Jackie. She's, I am just, I'm just Jackie on um, Twitter, but, and she like does YouTube and stuff like that, but she also professionally has a company and I've talked about this on here before. So I had a consultation with her. She basically laid out everything I needed to do and I was actually going to just do it myself. But then my friend that I know that has this nonprofit, I kind of more so went to her like, hey, can you just kind of help me fill out this paperwork just to make sure I do it right? And she's like, I mean, I could do that or you could do this. And she kind of explained whatever. And I decided to go that route because community in things is important to me. I think it's good to have. I mean, I have a mentor, you know, just personally, um, it start. And I say mentor, it's so funny. And she listens and we laugh about this because really our relationship started with just as when I worked at a, a nonprofit I used to work at, they would match you up with people to pray for you. So that's kind of how we met, how we got hooked up. Gosh, that was 2014. So almost seven years ago. But I don't know. I don't want to say friend just because. I don't know. I feel like a lot of times I go to her with like, hey, this is what I'm going through. Sometimes it's just listening or whatever. So I feel like she's more of a mentor than just like one of my peers. It's just that level of respect. But anyways, the whole point is I have people that, you know, even personally, whatever. So having a business mentor, I feel like is very valuable. Having somebody who's already started a business, is running a company, has a lot of knowledge in business, but then also knows other things that I know I need that I don't know that I, I mean, she knows what I need that I might not necessarily know that I need, or there could be things I need. And she's like, oh, hey, I already have, you know, a connection for that. So that'll be super dope. So the company that I'm going to be starting, it's super interesting 
how for such a time as this, <laughs> that's why this is, um, the episode is called what it is because I'm a person that, as you can tell, if you're not new, you know, I'm a very reflective and I think deeply about things. And I'm, I'm not saying other people don't think deeply, but I'm always looking into and very reflective on whatever. That's the whole reason why this show is set up the way that it is. And so professionally for the past over a decade, I have been working in the social work field. Um, when I look at the scope of everything that I have kind of focused on, it's been personal and professional development. It's been in different ways. And I've actually worked with different age groups because I've worked with adults. I've worked with teenagers, you know, so basically ninth grade and up is the range and workforce development. I use that kind of as like the umbrella, but really it's been when I think about everything that I focused on because my degree is in psychology. So, and I'm very passionate about the behavior patterns of people. You could kind of tell that by me talking about boundaries and all these things and being healthy mentally, emotionally, spiritually, etc. So that's what I've been doing for the past 10 years. The thing about the social work field is it's really not as financially lucrative <laughs> as I would like it to be. Um, and it's just kind of interesting how things have just been lining up to kind of confirm as I'm headed towards, you know, being done with the, the courses that I'm taking or the program, I'll be done with that at the end of April. So then at the end of April, my business will be, uh, I guess we'll just say legitimize because, you know, I'll have an official business or whatever. So I'm kind of working on that, but it's interesting because I'm going to be focusing on professional and personal development skills or services that I'm going to be offering. I'm even going to be getting into kind of doing personalized gifts because it's kind of something that I've been doing like just it's, I don't know, I like to create. And so I'm the kind of person that when I give people gifts, I like to give personalized gifts. And now that I have this platform where I, ha you know, I can create, I have a merchandise store, I can do all these things. I've kind of gotten into that. So I'm going to be doing that as well. And we'll see where else it goes. But it's just kind of crazy how when you're in transition and you're heading from here to there, is when you start questioning things, you start doubting yourself. But in my life, which faith is a huge thing for me, you know, I have a relationship with God. I obviously am not perfect and don't ever try to claim to be and no, I will never be perfect. But I do try to live a life like with a relationship with God, which means, you know, I read my Bible, I pray or whatever. These are things that are important to me. They're beneficial to me, to my growth, et cetera. Okay. So that said that there's this, I'm, I'm heading towards, you know, getting to the end of this program. My company will be started. You doubt you, whatever. But then I also have confirmation of yes this is because i have so many random people coming to me asking me for like help with how to make a resume you know like basically everything that i professionally have been teaching people like one of the jobs i had was literally teaching ninth to 12th graders job readiness skills as well as also personal development skills, because I made sure to implement that because a lot of times people lose jobs just because they don't have good coping skills for how to deal with their personal life. Whereas I've walked through grief. I've walked through a divorce. I remember going through my divorce. I remember <laughs> as I'm going through my divorce, I'm going through homelessness because of the way we separated and never lost my job. And so basically a lot of the things that I apply in my own life and people who know me or even some of the stuff y'all have learned about me, see me walk through a lot, feel like I'm so strong or feel like I'm so whatever. And everybody has their own journey. And I'm not saying my way is the specific way to do things, but 
it is important to take care of yourself mentally and emotionally. Like that's important for everybody. It is important whether you believe in God or not, you do have a spirit. So it is important to be spiritually healthy, whatever that looks like to you. And I say it like that because everybody has different beliefs. And the purpose of this show is not to like try to convince anybody of anything. Now, I'm always going to talk about what I'm doing. You can agree with it. You can take it or not, whatever. So those things are important to me. Um, and so it's just been really interesting because a lot of people are just all of a sudden kind of just confirming what I'm already set out to do that <sighs> normally I just dive into stuff and figure it out as I go. So that's the interesting thing about me um, taking this program ahead of time is because I know it's going to give me a solid foundation that my build, my business will be able to stand on. Whereas with podcasting, I'm a year and a half in this journey. I've grown a ton and y'all who have been with me from when I first came on Twitter or even the beginning of my show for my friends that listen, you've seen my growth. Forget about my growth as a person, just my growth as a podcast. You've watched a podcaster. You've watched the different logos I've had. Now I have a professional logo because the actual graphic designer did it. You've seen, you know, the intro change. You've seen a change if you pay attention in the way I promote episodes, you know, whatever. So that's something that I just dove in. You also saw me add a blog, add merchandise. Like these are a lot of these things were not even things I was thinking about adding. Um, but the cool thing about it is creating the merchandise store and then creating a gift for someone, for people. But it started with one person where I'm like, oh, their birthday's coming up. I want to make them a gift. Then it was, if I had not already had a merchandise store, I wouldn't have necessarily thought of that. And so things build upon each other. But if you go back prior to podcasting, which I've said this before, I've always been somebody who's needed a creative outlet. I've always been somebody who's been pretty transparent about my life and my struggles, usually either via Facebook posts or in the jobs that I've done, I've been very transparent in teaching lessons and courses and stuff like that because I would lead workshops or people would ask me to come speak for youth groups. I've done youth ministries. Uh, I did it because now I'm technically not doing youth ministry, which is weird, but I did it for like 15 years, something like that. Um, close to it. I guess if you include the unofficial where I was just, you know, I guess mentoring youth in my neighborhood, we'll just say 15 years. So I look at all these things. And so I already had whatever. And now I have this platform to where I can do anything with this platform. And I've literally said that I can do anything with my show because it's my show. I don't do anything based on what like even the petty tam tam episode last week somebody asked me matter of fact not somebody it was jay we did a live together on her ig and she as part of the live was like so when are we going to get another petty tam tam episode and i'm like i don't know when it's kind of like i can only do what i actually feel like doing and creatively i like that now there's still structure because, okay, every Thursday an uh, episode has to come out. I have not missed a week yet. Don't plan on it, you know what I'm saying? Because the beauty of my show is even if I'm struggle struggling, I could just get on here and be like, hey, this is what I'm going through. I didn't feel like recording, but blah, blah, blah. And there's going to be somebody that is either going to relate or whatever. So though when people ask me or they say they weren't certain things, that's not going to dictate what I do because I can only do what I actually have to give. That's why I say things like that. I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just letting y'all know I can't give y'all what I don't have to give. And I don't think y'all take it like I'm trying to be rude anyway. So that's the beauty of having my own platform. But then also the beauty of that is that I already have um, supporters 
not everybody listens to my show, but people pay attention to my tweets or IG posts or whatever. So I have this platform so that I'm starting this company. Okay. So I already told you that it's going to be focused on personal and professional development services. Now, am I, I mean, ideally I'd love to get to the point of working for myself. And I even like, I even told my boss, like, I don't have a specific timeline on like, oh, I want to be gone in a month. But I did tell her like, hey, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm working towards. Um, It just came up naturally or whatever. It's not like I really had to tell her, but I talked to her about a lot of different stuff or whatever. So ideally, that would be great. You know what I'm saying? To get to the point of solely doing that and having multiple streams of them income because I've done a lot of different things. So there's a lot of ways that I can take my 10 years of professional experience and do things. And so that's kind of what I'm working on right now. It's not all the way like 100% mapped out because I've kind of more so been focusing on just getting the company established simply because it's like I already have a full-time job. I already have things I'm working on. So it's just, it's a very busy season. Okay. So that's cool. So once the company is started, what I'm also working on is launching a brand. I'm not going to say what the name of the brand is because I got to get it trademarked. Um, It's super dope. What I will say is, because it's something I, like I made up the name, made up a definition I already have a logo for it and like a tagline or whatever. And so the very few people that I've shown it to, which my daughters know, they're excited about it. And my daughters are the kind of people that they'd be like, "Eh," like they're super supportive of everything I do, but they're not going to just say it's dope just to say it. Um, I will say that it's something that is specifically to, uh, I guess, celebrate. It's going to start with just celebrating black women. If you know anything, I'm all about people knowing their worth and whatever. And I can't, I mean, I could speak to people as a whole, but there are just certain things that I've experienced as a black woman and whatever that, and I, and I'm a black woman. So it just is what it is, but it's not something that anybody else should feel like it's not like I'm throwing shade at any other gender race or whatever. It is going to get into also uplifting black men as well, but start with me, you know, me and mines or whatever. And, you know, I like to build upon things. So I will tell y'all that what that'll look like merchandise, uh, just everything related to, um, being mentally and emotionally healthy, being spiritually healthy. I'm not sure what the being physically healthy exactly yet, what that's going to look like, but it's basically, um, me, everything that is important to me, which is the stuff I talk about on this show, you know what I'm saying? And growth and stuff like that. It's all gonna, you know, so the company, my company will be legit at the end of April. The brand, I don't even know why I'm, I guess I do know why I'm telling you all this and we'll kind of get there in a second. The brand I want to launch on my birthday. So my birthday is June 27th. Holla at your girl. (sighs) I'll be 41 this year, which is just, it's just so weird that I'm in my 40s because I don't feel like I should be in my 40s. I know I don't look like I'm in my 40s from what people tell me. I don't know what 40 is supposed to look like because in my opinion, all my friends that are in their 40s don't look like they're 40. So I don't really know. Maybe y'all don't even know what you're talking about. But anywho, um, I want to launch the brand on my birthday because if you are, if you know anything about, okay, whether you know or don't, that don't mean you remember. So 
Like I said, my birthday is June 27th. Like I said a little earlier in this show, the girl's dad was killed almost six years ago. And he was killed almost 60 years ago on June 29th. So every year since his passing, when my birthday comes up, and I have always been somebody who is really into my birthday, even as an adult, because I became a mom at 19 and everything became about kids from there on. The only thing that's only about me is my birthday because even Mother's Day is about these kids that I had. <laughs> like, if I didn't have kids, I wouldn't be a mother. So, my birthday has always been the only thing is like, okay, this is my day. It's about me. I'm always so excited. But I, when I look back on old birthday pictures, I look like I was always excited on my birthday to have people celebrate me. And so I'm trying to like bring some redemption to my birthday. So the brand is going to launch on my birthday, probably starting in like, I don't know, May or June. You might see, it just depends when I get it trademarked because I have to get a trademark. And it's so funny with this brand because how this came, how this all came about is that, and this will all make sense why I'm telling you all this at the end, but you know how I do. I tell you a story and then I tell you what I learned from it or whatever. So how this all came about is I was actually just designing some merchandise. So when I came up with the Tam special wasted, and there's also this other one that says, you know, in a world full of memes, I am a gif. You have to experience me to get the full picture or something like that. So I was just creating merchandise, and that's when I came up with this brand name. I wasn't even thinking about starting. I wasn't even thinking about starting a company at that point, but it all kind of tied together. So I came up with this brand name. I came up with the definition, and I started to just put it on some merchandise. But what I know about people and what I know about the internet is that if somebody, like, not only do people steal content, but of course they steal ideas. Of course they steal whatever. And I just remember thinking, like, if I put this out there, somebody else could take it and try to say it was theirs, but I made this up. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm a big person that's about play on words. So I guess I'll just say that it's a play on words, just like Tamra till the break of dawn. My first name is Tamra. My middle name is Dawn. I don't know if you knew that, although it says that in the bio of my show and Tamra Dawn is all over like that's real. You know what I'm saying? And then till the break of dawn, you know, I'm a bit I was I was raised in the 90s. You know what I'm saying? So 90s hip 90s hip hop. So Tamra till the break of dawn, boom, this is about my life and the ways I'm, to, I'm trying to grow. So you're going to get Tamra till the break of dawn on and on and on. You feel me? So I'm a big person that's always been about a play on words. And so made up this definition, started to, I mean, word and definition, started to just put it on some merchandise. And then I was like, excuse me, if somebody was to steal this, I would be mad. Anything anybody, I, anything I do, if somebody else wants to talk about their life and how they grow, if somebody wants to do anything else I do, I really don't care because I look at it like you were inspired to do whatever. And I don't really trip off that because if I didn't want it, I wouldn't put it on the internet. You know what I'm saying? But when it came to that, I just started thinking like if somebody was to try to say they came up with this, I'd be a little salty. So then I started looking into trademarking and how does that work? So then I was just going to trademark this brand. But going back to when I had the consultation with Jackie, she kind of was like, what you should do basically is start a company that's kind of like this is a company and then anything else I do will be my company doing business as. And then that just makes it a little cleaner process, which for me being organized and structured is super important. And it just makes things where I can function better. So that's kind of how all this came about of me. And then 
once I was going to start a company, I was like, okay, well, if I'm going to start this company, what else can I do? Because I have all this experience. So how can I leverage that in the company? So it's like, it kind of happened organically. I never set out to do this, but then the more I'm getting, and then really literally the Lord was like, what's God talks to me, talks to me through my dreams. Or sometimes I just strongly, I don't want to say here, cause it's not like it's out loud, but feel something, whatever, however you look at it for me. So I'll just, I'll say it as the Lord is talking to me. You could call it intuition. You could call it whatever you want, but he's the one who told me to call my friend who then I thought it was just to have her help me fill out the paperwork. Boom. Now I'm a part of this program, which I, I love it. I love what I'm learning because there are things that I'm learning that I would have never considered because I wouldn't have known to consider it. Like I know people, you know what I'm saying? I studied people in school. I could tell you about boundaries. I could tell you about this, that, and the other via either what I learned in school or literally just life experience because I'm a very reflective person. It's just the education sometimes gives me knowledge that it gives me like language and like how to explain it in a universal way that everybody can understand it without always focusing on a specific incident. Whereas as if you pay attention, I usually focus like on emotions and the underlying things that we all can relate to rather than just like everybody can relate to grief, but maybe not everybody can relate to their ex-husband being killed. You know, that type of thing. Everybody can relate to rejection in some way or another, but maybe everybody can't relate to the, the fact that their bio dad, mine, wants nothing to do with them, even though I'm his only child. You know what I'm saying? So it kind of taught me how to explain things in a more just universal principle type of way, which has been super helpful, both professionally and also personally. Um, so yeah, never set out to do all these things. However, it's interesting because now what I'm seeing, it's almost like I was being prepared for such a time as this because so then let's go to, I was thinking about, okay, so I'm going to be starting this company and like, I could work from home. Yep. Cause I've been where I work from home with my job, you know what I'm saying? But I started thinking about there are certain things that I'm going to do that I'm not going to want to do from home. So I just kind of started thinking about that. Do to do fast forward, have a conversation with someone um, she's a mental health therapist. She has her own practice in her own office. And long story short, she gets to telling me how in June, remember that's when my, um, my brand is launching, but she gets to telling me that in June, she is going to be getting a bigger office space and that the bigger office space, there's going to be some other people in the office space, but that, um, there's basically, there's going to be an office for me. There's also going to be me if I want it. This is me super summarizing it. There's going to be office that I can use. Well, I could rent it for a dollar per square foot a month, which is nothing. So there's going to be office space that I can have. There's also going to be meeting space that I can have access to. So if I want to, not if, when I want to get into teaching workshops, if I want to, do some sort of, I don't know, grand opening. I don't, not grand opening because I'm not going to have a storefront, but do something for like an official launch for the brand or whatever. I could use the meeting space and stuff like that. Now, the crazy thing about this person is that I've known them from, for like 10 years and that in the last, uh, we'll just say year, we just kind of have started talking more frequently, have started just talking more about different stuff. And so that's what even made me talking to her about what I'm doing, her telling me what she's doing. And it's so funny because we've both said how we don't usually, and even me telling y'all all this now, I don't usually 
tell what I'm doing ahead of time, but it's kind of what's on my heart. And there's still obviously, as you can tell, things I'm leaving out just because if I was to say the brand name and then somebody was to take it, I'd be hella mad, but that's my fault for running my mouth. You know what I'm saying? So I could tell y'all what I'm doing without telling y'all what I'm doing. You feel me? Because I don't care if you start a company, more power to you. There's room for everybody. You know what I'm saying? And what they do and what's for me is for me. And somebody else doing something similar to me is not going to stop what's for me. That's why I am the way that I am. Even the podcast community, like I'll support other people. Sometimes I've done different show contents and I'll have other podcasters reach out to me. And I don't know if they're doing that to see if I, I don't know why they tell me, oh, I'm thinking about doing a show about that or, or like that or whatever. And I always say, that's great. I'm sure it'll be dope. Why? Because if I inspired you to do something, or maybe you were already thinking about it, I don't want to say I necessarily inspired you. And maybe that was confirmation that you needed to do it. More power to you. Like, I don't trip off stuff like that. But I'm telling you all this because 10 years ago, no, we don't even have to go back that far. A year ago, I would have never thought that it's so funny, man. Again, let's circle back to Paco. Uh, one time we were talking about because he's a business owner, he's a plumber in you know where he's at. I guess I could say Cleveland because he talks about it on his show, so you know, whatever. But he's a plumber, and one time we were, I was talking to him about when I used to do um, kind of work for myself doing gang intervention and how. I really enjoyed it, but it was just you're dealing. I was dealing with the state and working on their timetable for getting paid because it had to be like I had to submit something to my boss, and then I had to submit some that you know after he reviewed it to the probation officer, and then the probation officer had to send it to this person who had to send. So it was just this, and it seemed like no matter how quickly. I tried to be on top of my documentation because at first that was on me that I was kind of going slow. You know what I'm saying? But then it got to a point where it seemed like no matter how fast I moved, everybody else, somebody along the line, I won't say everybody, but something went slow and it just caused a lot of frustration. So I remember telling him how like, I don't want to work for myself, but it's just funny. Be and this was not a year ago because I didn't even, I don't even think I knew Paco a year ago. <coughs> Excuse me. But it's interesting how, so if you would have asked me, okay, we'll say that was six months ago, I wouldn't have been telling you I was trying to start a company. If you would have asked me five years ago, I wouldn't have been saying that, especially trying to start a, a brand. If you would have asked me 10 years ago, I wouldn't have thought that if you would have asked me 15 years ago, man, I wanted to be a family therapist. That's why I actually got a degree in psychology, but it's just on that journey, I realized that's not what I wanted, but I knew I was still very passionate about the behavior patterns of people, et cetera. So I knew I'd figure out how to work, you know, and be able to do that. Excuse me. So if you would have asked me all these things along this journey, I would have never thought that. And that's why I say in hindsight, and I'm not even there yet. So there are still things that are probably going to be added on to this because that's how my life goes that, you know, and then there's going to be things when I get there that it's going to continue to evolve and grow because that's the way it goes. But sometimes you're being prepared for such a time as this. So that's why this is what the episode is called because I remember this one job that I got where I was working with um, the ninth to 12th graders, teaching them job readiness skills, et cetera. And I remember when the woman hired me because I had not technically professionally worked with kids. I had only done youth ministry, but I also had taught 
work readiness skills within the previous job. And so I remember her saying that, like, had I not had both of them things together, I would not have, they wouldn't have hired me. But then there are things that I learned in the job that I had before that, that were super beneficial in that job that no one in that job could teach me, but I, but it, but I needed it to make my job more efficient because I'm all about efficiency. If you're going to do the same thing over and over, I'm going to have a template for it. Like for my uh, weekly episode promo tweets and even blog promo tweets in my phone, in my notes, I have different templates that I just copy, put it in a different thing, plug in the information that's, so it's like blank in certain spots and the information that stays the same, um, stays the same. And then I'll just add what's needed. And then I use either Hootsuite, I think Hootsuite, however you say that, and Facebook IG business to like schedule stuff because I really hate promoting. So if I just get it out the way, you know, it'll pop up and then it'll be there. But I, I don't, I'm not about to do that like on Thursday when an episode drops draft. Uh, no, I'm not doing that. So, you know, I'm all about stuff like that. So there were things that I needed for that job working with those youth that I learned at the previous job. And then there are things that I learned working with the youth that I needed at the next job. And then there were things at the next job that I need at my current job that no one, it's not anything that it's like, I already needed to know it. I already needed to be prepared for it. And then even when you get into podcasting, there are things that I learned more so by people not supporting me that makes it where I love the support. I appreciate the support, but I don't do what I do for the support, which also makes it where when people come at me, I'm starting to get a lot of people that They'll follow me, I'll follow them back, and then they'll instantly hop in my DMs and be like, thanks for the follow, can you do this for me because it would really mean a lot to me. We've built no rapport, and so what I do now, I don't even remember, I think before I used to kind of just do stuff to be nice, but I'm realizing in the industry, I don't know these people. They don't like, these are not my friends. This is networking. This is whatever. And I have no problem now what I do, because y'all know I'm all about teaching. Even when I'm being petty, it's still, there's a lesson in it because I'm just a teacher at heart. Like a a goal of mine is to be able to be an adjunct professor, mainly because I don't want to have to go back and get my master's and be able to teach college courses. Like that's a goal, even if it's just, teach one class, like that's a goal of mine. And so I'm just a teacher. Like I'd rather try to educate people because I'm not going to assume that people should know or they do know because that that's usually not how it goes. And so now what I do is I'm like, you know, great pitch. Here's a suggestion. And I basically tell them like, if you don't, but I say it in a like extremely teachable type of way and kind because it's important to be kind to people. But basically what I tell them is that if you don't have rapport for, with someone, this needs to be mutual, mutually beneficial if you're going to ask a fellow podcaster. And I always use that language because I feel like some people don't like me. When people follow me, I look in their bio to see who they are. If it's a content creator, those are the people I usually automatically follow back. Other people, it kind of depends. Like there's there's only a few reasons I wouldn't follow somebody back, but that's irrelevant right now. Content creators, I usually follow back because I think of networking and supporting and because I'm all about supporting other, not, I say content creators because there are sometimes just YouTubers or bloggers Nobody who 
you know, interacts with me on Twitter or Instagram. And I say that because my personal Facebook, I mean, I may share people, but that's a whole different crowd of people. That's like my friends and family. But nobody can say that I don't support people. You know what I'm saying? But if you're hopping in the DMs of a fellow podcaster, it needs to be mutually beneficial. Like, let's be real. Why do I care about what is going to be beneficial to you? Or why do I care about what would be helpful to you when I don't know you and you haven't done anything helpful to me? Like, you want me to, and it's the principle, because yes, I could just do it, but I just feel like there is professionalism. And I've been tweeting about this stuff because like, just because we're content creators doesn't mean there doesn't need to be a level of professionalism in the industry. And I'm someone, this is why I work in work for workforce development, where when things within companies, there's a lack of professionalism or whatever that drives me crazy. That's why I love my current job because I get to help train up the people who are service coordinators. I get to audit cases and make sure things are done correctly. I even get to be a part of like coming up with ideas if, you know, if they ask for our feedback or whatever on how things can be done more efficiently or whatever. I love stuff like that. I like writing standard operating procedures. I've done that before for companies that don't have them because it's kind of like, a lot of times in nonprofits, they just kind of throw you in and it's sink or swim. And the ones I've worked in anyway, and you, you like learn as you go and some stuff you kind of need to know like ahead of time, or at least I'm someone that can figure things out as I can go. As I said earlier, that's how I generally like to do things. Not everybody is like that though. So you do need to have standard operating procedures in place so that people can know what, not just what's expected of them as an employee, but like, what are certain things expected within their role, especially when they're running a program or stuff like that? Like, it shouldn't just be that you have to work closely with someone for them to train you. Because like, when I left a specific job, I, there was only a two week overlap of when my replacement was there and we were together. And that is not enough time to like train anybody on anything efficiently. So I actually offered to create the standard operating procedures just as a, Hey, this is, can I do this before I go instead of attend all these meetings that really don't matter because I'm not about to be here anymore anyway. So I don't need to help plan for the next school year when I'm not even going to be here. Like that's how I am. I'm more about helping someone to do it the right way rather than just go along with whatever, you know what I mean? And yes, that takes more time, but I don't know. I just have a burden for things being done efficiently. There needs to be re professional etiquette within the podcast community. And that's why I've been tweeting all this stuff because I don't know why all these people just hop in my DMs, but it's like, if you see I'm a fellow podcaster, don't think I owe you anything because I don't. Cause I don't, cause the thing about it is I don't ask for anything that I'm not willing to give. Like I get retweets because I'm in a retweet group. So the expectation of being in the group is that you don't ask for more than you give. So if you're not going to retweet anybody's stuff, don't be bringing your tweets in here, you know, expecting us to retweet it. I, if you look at my timeline, you know, I retweet a bunch of people's stuff. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, and then even beyond that, I just support people. If I see something on the timeline, I just retweet it. Or when I'm listening to a podcast rotation, I, you know, tweet out, hey, this is what I'm listening today. And I'm I'm saying all this because, because I move like that, I feel like if you get offended because I try to educate you. I don't have this thing of, oh, well, I'm not going to speak truth because you might unfollow me. Unfollow me then because you're going to need to learn that lesson, especially for 
those of you who your specific goal is like to make it in the podcast game, you know what I'm saying? Or make it really an indie industry. There needs to be professional etiquette with networking, et cetera. You can't be using people and you definitely ain't going to use me because I don't care. <laughs> like I'm not doing this to gain anything other than have a creative outlet. But the thing about it, though, is because I'm supportive of other people, people willingly support me, like, and I'm not saying they don't even necessarily have to listen. People willingly retweet or whatever stuff simply because I support people. So it's like when you, excuse me, genuinely do things, People are more willing because what you what people fail to realize is a lot of times in this these retweet groups, we vent about the way that people, you know, stuff I've complained about on here. Like if I'm doing a a, pro, a promo tweet for my episode, which I am a solo podcaster. So those of you that are solo podcasters know how much work it is to create content. Like people think all you got to do is hop in front of a mic and no, you, it's more than that because you have to, you know, have something you want to talk about. You have to, some people have like very structured, um, how they, man, some people write scripts, shout out to them. Cause I can't do all that. That's why my show is structured the way it is, you know what I'm saying? Everybody has whatever. Then there's editing, there's promoting, there's all, it's like a lot of work. Like basically I got two jobs and then I'm trying to start a company, you know what I'm saying? But this is going to be one of the things underneath that company. So that's, you know, the nice thing or whatever, but it's a lot of work. So then when I do my promo tweets and then you have people that want to hop on and hijack your promo tweet to try to talk about their stuff. We vent about that stuff in the retweet groups because that's raggedy, like, and that's lazy. You're trying to ride somebody else's wave. Like, don't do that. People are going to do what they're going to do because some people could care less uh, or they might not even be the ones listening to that. But I'm the one that's going to speak up on stuff you know what I'm saying? Because I don't care. Wrong, right is right and wrong is wrong regard, regardless. <laughs> Stuttering and stuff now. And because I'm in this, I, I don't know, I'm me wherever I go. So I'm going to speak truth and I'm going to speak out on what I feel is bull in all things. You know what I'm saying? That's why my show is about encouraging y'all to grow as I'm sharing the ways I'm trying to grow. Because one, it shows you that I'm about what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? I could be on here faking, but y'all would know. You know what I'm saying? You could only be fake for so long. And people interact with me outside of here. Y'all have seen my kids on here. Like, y'all would know if it was, especially with my kids, man, especially my youngest, because she's so petty. <laughs> um, But you know, because though I'm not in this for anything other to have a creative outlet. And even if I was trying to make it in the podcast industry, I still think there needs to be professional etiquette. And I still think a lot of people need to learn that. I'm not going to say everybody because everybody doesn't do this, but those ones that hop in my DM because you came to me. I didn't come to you asking you for anything because I have a retweet group. So I go to the retweet group and that's where I'm like, hey, can you retweet this? Because that's the whole purpose of the group. Other groups that I'm in that are not specific retweet groups, I don't do that because I just feel like there needs to be professional etiquette. And if somebody started a group for a completely different reason, just because I have this tweet that I want to get viewed more, I don't know. That's just how I am. I'm like, if in all things, like, I mean, I'm not saying I don't ever break rules or anything like that. Cause I'd be lying if I said that, but it's just kind of like my moral, I don't want to say moral compass. Cause it's not even about that, but like, I don't know. I just think certain things need to be done 
with etiquette and if I feel like this is more so bordering on the line of you trying to use me or whatever, I'm not going to just go along with that. Um, and so let me bring it back because now I done got so <laughs> far into that that I don't even remember why I brought that up. But yeah, I'm starting a company. I'm doing all these things. And oh, this is what I was getting in, getting at. I've been being prepared for such a time as this. In all things, you know what I'm saying? I see where I didn't know I was being prepared for such a time as this, for what I'm heading into, and even what I'm doing now, you know what I'm saying? But I have been. So that's my encouragement to you is that when you feel like you want to do something, even if you don't have the full picture, sometimes you just got to step into that a little bit just to kind of step by step, let it unfold. But if you also notice, I'm also setting a good foundation by being a part of this program, but that's still me stepping into it because the more that I learn in this program, the more that I even learn about things that are just related to other stuff. You know what I'm saying? That it's like, oh, okay, I would have never thought of that. So I think sometimes you're being prepared for something you don't know you're being pre prepared for. But what I do know is that for the most part, and this all has to do with purpose and stuff like that, because I do believe that we all have some purpose for being here for what we're supposed to offer to the world. Like only we can offer that. One of the things my pastor often says is find your woe and you'll find your flow. So it's kind of like when I was talking earlier about having a burden, like something that it's like, oh man, this really drives me crazy. Like it really for a while just irritated me that people follow you so I follow you back because you're a content creator. And then you hop in my DMs. Hey, thanks for the follow. Can you, and send me this whole paragraph about why I should listen, rate, subscribe, uh, do this, do that. And the other, and I'm like, bruh, like, like I've said before on here bef before, whatever, like I've said on here before, like no kind of finesse y'all just, Hop in it raw. Like that's the analogy that I think of. Like no kind of foreplay, no kind of first date, no kind of nothing. Just follow, follow back, boom. I need you to do all this stuff for me. That used to irritate me. So now I'm like, okay, since it keeps happening, let me educate folks because maybe they don't realize, and then maybe they do when they don't care. But then if you don't respond or you whatever, then that message is just going to sit there and I'm not going to do nothing because like I said, this is networking and I'm all for supporting people, whatever. And you know that, but it needs to be mutually beneficial. Like what am I getting out of this as a podcaster? I'm not going to just be nice and just do something. And the reason, and I used to at first, but then I just started thinking like, but I don't do that to people. Why? Because I like, that's not how I move. So like I said, I don't ask for more than what I'm willing to do because I understand that networking needs to be mutually beneficial. And the reason I learned that is because professionally, I have a lot of resources and I have a lot of connections that like if I would ask somebody to come speak to the kids or whatever, it's because we had already built rapport, you know what I'm saying? Or it's because we had already had some sort of, and maybe you benefit from coming to speak or whatever. And so I kind of learned that in my professional life, you know what I'm saying? And that's why I've been saying things like, there needs to be professional etiquette in the industry because yes, we are content creators. Yes. We want to get our con like, of course I want to get my content out, but that's why when someone approached me and was like, Hey, do you want to be a part of a retweet retweet group? And I was like, well, what's that? Cause I, 
I didn't know. And then he explained it to me. I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. However, I have to do my part in the retweet group. I can't be in the retweet group sending all my tweets and saying, hey, can y'all like and retweet this? And I don't do my part. Why? Man, I didn't see people get uh, escorted out of groups when people realize that, oh, you're not like you're not about to you can't use people just because we're content creators and people maybe can get away with it for a little bit but eventually you know what i'm saying so it's kind of like i've learned that though in my professional life so there does need to be professional etiquette in the podcast industry which i'm actually going to be doing some content it's i mean i'm still going to do my regular episodes, but as part of with this company, I'm going to be doing content related to just things that I've learned that I feel like would be helpful to people. I'm telling you, I don't care if somebody else creates this because I'm still going to create it regardless because you have, first of all, we're probably not going to create the same things because there are things that I view from the lens that I view it. But hell, if we do create the same things, who cares? You know how many different how to start a podcast, YouTube videos I saw or whatever. Like, I don't care. It probably be helpful to your listeners. You know what I'm saying? But I am going to be creating some content related to that because it's kind of like it irritates me enough that I don't really like to complain I'm really, that's why even though low key, I'd be irritated by the just entitlement that I feel like people have. Sometimes my tweets never are like that. It's like, okay, do I want to complain or do I want to encourage growth for whoever else that maybe doesn't realize whatever? And I'm always going to lean towards encouraging growth because that's just who I am. Like, my kids will say everything is a teachable moment (laughs) or, Oh, here you go. You're going to appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? When I'm gone and you don't have me to be theirs for you to say, Oh, here you go. So for such a time as this, I realize I've been being prepared for what I'm doing now, where I'm going. And that's usually the case with, most people, even if you don't realize it. So if that resonates with you, I hope it's confirmation of whatever plans you're doing or whatever, or just, Hey, this is my life. You know what I'm saying? Um, but hopefully there's something, you know, some takeaway from that. Like I said, everything that, or I think I was about to say this, everything that you need to fulfill your purpose is in you. You may need to get some education, some training, whatever, but the foundational things are already in you. It could be something that, you know, like the people who, um, like I think of, uh, forget that yo podcast, for example, where they talk about finances and, and stocks and just different stuff related to finances that, that's not what their entire show is about. They talk about all kinds of stuff, but that is something that they're passionate about that if they didn't have that in their show, I've learned a lot about stuff that I would have never thought that's what I would have got from their show at all because it doesn't always come at the beginning of the show. It usually is towards the end, but sometimes it's woven throughout, but their show is also hilarious. You know what I'm saying? But I bring that up because they are a regular in my rotation and they're one of the only podcasts that regularly talk about finances. So like um, no one else could do it the way that they do it. Or I think about, uh, hmm, I don't know. I can't think of. I'm not saying there isn't other stuff, but I think about, um, yeah, that's, (laughs) that's all I got. Cause, um, 
yeah. So my whole point though is only you can do what you need to do. There is a void that only you can fulfill on this earth. So tap into that. You know what I'm saying? Going back to the whole legacy thing, we are writing our legacy every day that we are here. And when we look at somebody like DMX, who he was very open about different struggles. And what's beautiful about that is like through his music, I saw where somebody posted that, um, you know, the song slipping and falling and can't get up. Hey, I'm slipping and falling. It can't get up. But how they were saying how it was on Instagram and I don't even remember whose account it was because so many people were posting about him today, but they were saying how they didn't grow up like him, but they related to that song. And they said that they grew up with both parents and what would be considered a traditionally like a good household you know what i'm saying and how some people would feel like oh well you shouldn't have any struggles because blah 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 and they're like that's not how it goes and i hate when people say that because everybody has struggles like and i hate when people get into the whole like you know your just because your situation may be more extreme doesn't mean that somebody else is going through, who's going through something who you don't view, I guess, as bad as yours. It doesn't lessen the effect of their struggle on them. I hate when people have that mindset, even like when there was a church that I used to go to that always say like, Oh, so, or no, I've heard a lot of churches say this, like so-and-so has a powerful testimony just because they've been through a lot of like, extreme circumstances, I feel like a changed life is a changed life and that's powerful. I don't care if you used to hate God and now you believe in him or we could take it away from God. I don't care if you used to, um, no, I don't know. You didn't have enough education to do something and then you had to power through and get a degree or training or whatever. I just feel like Growth and progression is growth and progression. And it's not something that you can say is more than the other because you can't measure it the same because everybody is different. Everybody has different internal thought processes, mindsets, uh, whatever you want to, you know, ideology, etc. People have different external circumstances, how they were brought up their financial situation, et cetera. So you can't really compare yourself to anybody in anything. Like even with my weight loss journey, you can't compare that if maybe you're, I don't know, you feel like you're struggling or you see me like right now I'm in the middle of this every day in April. I'm trying to close my exercise ring. It's just a goal I set for April And I don't always do this because if you follow me on IG, you know, but just because you see me success, quote unquote, with working out, I guess now, but what you don't realize, and this is why I'm very transparent, is that for 10 years, it was this battle. Like even the fact that I've been consistent with working out, we'll say since November, although there still have been um, times when, I don't know, I wasn't feeling the greatest or had whatever. I started this, this, this journey a little more seriously in February of 2020 had success, lost weight, fell off, you know what I'm saying? And gained it all back. So you can't compare yourself to what you see really on social media. Y'all don't know me. And even the people who do know me and talk to me, I'll even say my kids who see me every day, they don't know everything. Like you just, you don't know. And you, and we got to stop comparing ourselves to other people and, you know, stuff like that. And so do you, you know, you have a void. I mean, there is a void that only you can fill. You know what I'm saying? Like only you can do it. 
whether you're a podcaster or not, that's still true. So figure out what that is, walk in that, embrace that, and you will thrive. When you're out here trying to be a carbon copy of somebody else, when you are a masterpiece, and that's like such a cliche statement that you hear a lot, but it's true. Like you were created like you were created to do what you were created to do. And if you're going to be out here trying to do what somebody else is trying to do, you're going to be miserable. First of all, second of all, people, you might be able to fool people for a little bit, but people can tell when you're being authentic. You know what I'm saying? Like y'all who know, know that I'm just, this is just me. Like the people who talk to me a lot outside only thing they're going to get more than y'all is my petty side. Although <laughs> last week's episode was definitely, but really that's how I can be when I'm in that mode. You know what I'm saying? Like that's about, but there's nobody who knows everything. Only I know everything uh, aside from God. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't care who you are because, and I've said this on here before I give maybe so-and-so all of this section of my life, but then maybe we don't talk about this other section at all. Cause it's just not, don't have nothing to do with anything. So it's kind of like, do you, let's just go ahead and wrap it up because I don't want to continue to ramble or whatever. Yeah. Do you walk in your purpose, whatever that is thrive. Um, and you'll feel the most fulfilled. Like, it's a busy season, yes, but I love creating content. I love recording. I, I even am starting to like promoting because I'm finding different ways to do it efficiently. So it, I, oh my gosh, I used to hate episode promo tweets. You know what I'm saying? So do you, boo boo, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, you know, that's all I got for y'all. So, Thank you so much for tuning in. I, I appreciate y'all as always. Make sure you're taking care of your mental and emotional health, whatever that looks like. Make sure you're taking care of yourself to be spiritually healthy as well. That is super important. Physically healthy doesn't necessarily have to be the snatched 40s journey. You feel me like I'm on. But hell, make sure you get in sleep at night. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you're drinking water and uh, eating decently. So you're not filling yourself with crap that you could get away with it for however long, but eventually it catches up with you. It doesn't have to necessarily be weight gain. Hell, it could just be why you ain't got no energy is because all you eat is junk food all day. You know what I'm saying? So that's my encouragement to y'all. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Appreciate y'all. And I'll see y'all next time. Ladies and gents, this concludes transmission. Tune in next time for a whole new edition. Another adventure and mission to share, be heard, and clarify the vision of this whole new world for... Tim.